Hello, sisters and friends. Happy Monday, everybody. I hope you're having a great start to the week. I hope this is a great start to your week. Today, I have all of my sisters on the podcast, which is so much fun. We've actually never gotten to do this before. We have Abby all the way from Texas. Let's go. We have B. We have Mary Kate. We have Rebecca. Y'all kept saying, bring your sisters back. I said, why don't you do y'all one even better? I'll bring them all back. And I'm so excited. We have been laughing already, though, because we've been talking about this problem we share when we're together and that is the obsessive use of the word like (laughs) it is a real struggle and Bella Rebecca and I were made aware by our problem by all of your lovely comments (laughs) from our last podcast and so here's the thing we have prayed we prayed that the Holy Spirit would empower us to not use those words Bella's even told us that it's a lack of intelligence that we use this word so often that's not exactly what I said But I'm glad we're getting this out here so that everybody knows if we say it, we feel bad about it. And we don't you don't we don't need you to keep telling us. Like we know. (laughs) Don't remind us. Please don't comment that we say like because we know. Bella said it's a lack of intelligent to use filler words like like and And that is a very and that's um that's a like a thirty minute video. Taking out of context. That's not like the whole I mean it's a whole video, but it's not, it's n- that's a very like brief way of saying what he said. There's yeah. a lot more grace involved. Yeah, a lot I'm not more. saying he said, if you say like, you're stupid, that's not what he said. Yeah. <laughs> but then Rebecca got on the other. fence and Rebecca said, um, talking is not the way that you can tell someone's intelligence. Not, not the only <laughs> way. Not the only way. Not the only way. Words. Yeah. Yeah. So then we got to thinking, well, is talking actually the way that you do share your intelligence because that is kind of how you express what is happening in your mind. So we were having all kinds of deep combos. Okay, we already had to cut because we already started laughing so hard. And here's the thing. I said this on the podcast. I just interviewed Lainey and I said, Lainey, you're one of the hardest people for me to interview because you're one of my best friends and interviewing your best friends or your sisters is extremely hard to stay on track. And it's All of you are listening into a conversation that we're having. And when you think about lack of intelligence, the time that you're going to be the least intelligent and the most relaxed of the way you talk are with your sisters, which is the beauty of sisterhood. And this whole podcast, Sisters and Friends, we created it for it to feel more real because sisterhood is the most real relationship. You laugh so hard that you cry. You cry so hard that you laugh. This is just the most honest relationship you're going to have with someone. And so we might say like a time or two. We might say dumb things. We might start laughing for no reason. And that's just what sisterhood is. Um, But I really am so excited to have them on the podcast today. And we're going to kind of actually answer some of your DMs. DMs that you guys have sent in. But before we get to some of your DMs, because we're in the month of February, I was like, you know, we always have conversations about New Year's resolutions in January, but it might be actually more fun to talk about them in February because it's like, did we stick to them? How are we doing in them? Is it something that's attainable? All the things. So Abby, you kick us off. What were your New Year's resolutions? Did you have a word for the year? What's going well? What's not going great? So I kind of went more with like ins and outs of 2023 and 2024. Um, And then I chose a word for the year. The word is more, uh, more of everything, more of more peace, more patience, um, more spending time in God's word. And I have all of like my prayers listed out, but um, Ins and outs. I actually want to read them because I can't think of them all off the top of my head. And I had a longer list, but I left it in my office. So I'm mourning that. So when you first said it, I was like ins and outs, but I forgot. That's the trend right now. It's a right trend, now. yeah. What's mm-hmm. in and what's out. Mm-hmm. I like that. That's yeah. good. So outs, washing my hair every day. These are just like attainable ones. Out? Like out. That's good. I That's good. got to stop washing my hair every day. Every single day. Yes. It's like a thing with curly hair. You have to wash it very often. But I'm there's supposed to be a way that you can train your hair to like not get as greasy as quick. So I'm going to try to I'm trying to do that. Today is day two and I'm not having a good time. Stay strong. Oh, gosh. OK. Well, anyways, thankfully slick back hair is in right now. So. That's true. But also I have a really big head. So, <laughs> so I can't do slick back as well as everybody else can. I, don't, I, don't really know. No. I do have a big head. Let um, Bella do it for you. Let's see. Yes. We'll see. Hey, you did. Your hair like mine at the beach yep. in and North Carolina, and you'll do my sleep. Okay, um, sleeping in past ten, skipping my night my skincare nighttime routine because sometimes I just skip it. And I'll just put like moisturizer on, and anyways, um, no more than one coffee a day. 
which is a hard one. That's hard. But I've been pretty good about it lately. I haven't had any more than one that I know of. Um, energy drinks, doom sco- scrolling, FOMO. What's doom scrolling? Doom scroll? You don't know what doom scrolling? No. Like just scrolling mindlessly. Like there's just no lingo for it. Just, I, love I that. just can't yeah. spend hours on my doom phone scrolling. anymore. That's yeah. good. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. New term. I know. Yes. Abby, I need to talk to you more. Yes. It's very um, educational. Yeah. FOMO. I'm so bad at having FOMO. I want to be everywhere at one time. And I just like. Speaking of lingo, have y'all heard of JOMO? No. <laughs> did Julian you, did you miss out? out? It's <laughs> like people who don't like to go to things. It's like, no, I got JOMO. Like when That's I don't hilarious. have to go to something, I've got that the you're joy actually of missing. Glad. Yeah. yeah. Do you yeah. have JOMO? Sometimes I do. I did too. I did. I've never struggled I, with I, FOMO. I flop, but I, I, I don't struggle with FOMO. Mary Kate, you are a JOMO girl. I am. That's I really awesome. am. I'm, I don't really struggle with You're content with. I am. Yeah. I'm just content like, where I'm at. Walk in that yeah. confidence, girl. I love it. That's yeah. good. I need a little bit more of JOMO. JOMO. Um. Buying more. This was one of your mom's last year, New Year resolutions, I think. Um, buying more product, like whatever hair, makeup, skin, when I haven't finished the last one. That's good. So I did it last year and I kind of noticed a difference, but this year I'm going to be like full. Seriously, not even like stocking up. That's good. Before I buy anyways. Wait, so don't buy it? Like if you have blush, don't buy new blush till you're actually done with the last one. Mom literally texted me on like December 28th this year and was like, send me all your recommendations. I can finally buy stuff again. (laughs) Literally, I was... Yeah, she did. And I actually told Christian the same thing because I was like, I'm not going to buy, um, I'm just not, I'm, for the month of January, I'm not going to buy anything I don't need. And so I haven't been buying anything I don't need except for I keep adding things to my car. I'm waiting till February and I'm like, yeah. that is so dumb. That is not the point. That is not. That's so true. Time until February to decide if you really That's need it. That, it actually does though because I know I'm not going to buy all these things, but I'm like, yeah. I'm just waiting and thinking about it a little bit longer. So it actually is good, but I I have learned that I did need this lesson. And maybe I should I always wait too long it. and then it's like empty for like and then I'd never have time to go back. I ha- I'm like out of foundation, I'm out of like literally I've been using like eyeshadow for everything because like that's the only makeup I eyeshadow for everything. Eyeshadow for so what? Like, for my like brows, my like eyeliner, for my like Everything like just like using like for the same hair. palette for everything. She's using and I brown use, as like, her foundation. I use like her bronzer, <laughs> a little darker. No, I well, I do have the stick, but I use like the little kind of like the pot, like whatever, mm-hmm. like for like blush. But I use that on my, you know, like cheeks and lips. Like I don't, you know, have anything else. Like so, I have like that's impressive. three items really I use for makeup. That is impressive. Wow, that's yeah. actually that's impressive. very impressive. And I, I just like run out of time to go get some, and then I'm like haven't had time to go get yeah. them I'm just kind of on the last yeah. you know yeah that's a different problem yeah okay now to ends sitting jeans I have fallen victim to only wearing the tightest I jeans I did not jeans. okay so sitting, sitting jeans, jeans stand up jeans like there's jeans you wear that's like but this you is my problem stand in them. <laughs> I try to wear both but sitting is not, not comfortable, comfortable. Like and then there's stomach. sitting jeans it's like Jeans, you can sit and you can stand in comfortably. So that's well, do you only in. wear that's sitting in. jeans when you know you're... Wait, do you... Hold on. Do you only wear your standing jeans when you know you're not going to be in places you're going to have to sit often? No. You just wear them anytime no. and then it ends up hurting your stomach because you've been sitting in them for too long. <laughs> I have never, I've never, I've never heard of that. Surely you have a pair of jeans that oh, are I do. too tight. Of course. Yeah, every of time course. you sit down, you're like, why do I wear these? Like, yes. just... Yeah, I'm no, literally. I'm all, I already I'm all took comfort. them all to. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Wow. Um, going to bed early, taking my lunch to work. I go out way too much. Just quick and easy for lunch. Um, reading more, more water. Um, casual posting because I've been. I don't know. I, it's just been a whole thing. Cooking at home. <laughs> casual posting. Oh, I love these terms. Like doom scrolling and casual that's not even posting. That's like a term. I feel like that's just like no. doom scrolling and like casual posting. posting casually. And sitting wow. in sanding jeans. Yeah.
Y'all, I love learning. I love growing. It's part of the reason I love doing this podcast is because I get to learn and grow from so many people who are so wise. And it's not only important, but super beneficial for us to grow and learn in our everyday lives. That can look a lot different for everybody and in different seasons, but Audible has you covered to learn and grow every day, whether you're looking to improve your physical, mental, spiritual, or financial health. So with thousands of titles, an Audible membership offers a rich variety of content, including bestsellers, new new releases, and exclusive originals on all the things. You can listen to more of what you already love and discover so many things that maybe you haven't even tried yet. Um, You'll find stories that motivate you and voices that inspire you to dream bigger than ever. Audible even offers soothing sounds uh, to help you focus, recharge, and reduce stress. Plus, Audible members get to pick and keep one title from the entire catalog each month, which is so awesome, especially if you love listening to things. This is such a huge win. And with the app, You can listen anytime, anywhere, wherever works for you, and you can have all your favorite content in one place. Audible has some great health and wellness options. For me, um, this is something that is different for me to start listening to, but Audible, like I said, you can listen to what you love and try new things. You can listen to so many wise people like Jordan B. Peterson. My mom talks about him all the time, always tells me to listen to his things like 12 Rules for Life. So excited to dive into that. Or like I've uh, recommended several times on this podcast, Dr. Amen. All of his titles are there. So go listen to Change Your Brain, Change Your Life by Dr. Amen today. Go ahead and try this now. New members can try Audible now for free for 30 days. Just visit audible.com slash woe or text woe, W-H-O-A to 500-500. So simple. That's audible, A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot com slash woe or text woe to 500-500 to try Audible for free for 30 days. Okay, this is the last two. Being more body confident, and then I've been doing at-home nails this year. Oh, that's good. There's two nail options now. Yeah. Yes, I've been doing dip on my nails. Wow. And they, Are those they've been the pretty good. The one you did at home? Yeah. It's good. It's really good. It's so good. I'm Thanks. impressed. That was yeah. so good. Okay, I, I'm asking for myself and for everyone listening, you should share your ins and outs because that was like, yeah. that honestly sounded more, like something you would find on Pinterest. Like yeah. all of the, even the verbs and terms Kansas, yeah. you used was so good. Yeah. And like, I love that. So prepared. Yeah. So prepared. I don't need to follow yeah. that. These are <laughs> active yeah. things though that I'm trying to like be better at. They're attainable. Yeah, I, they're practical. Yeah. And then there's like some deeper ones in there that, you know, you can work towards, but all the other practical ones get you there too. That was really good. Was good. Thanks for sharing. All right, B. Okay, you know, I'm going to go in a totally different direction. <laughs> right after Abby. Um, which I didn't really realize that this is what we were talking about, but it actually works out kind of because I was writing about this the other night. And so everybody knows I've been off socials of my social game lately and in a good way I just have not been posting not sharing but I've been like writing a lot more and like writing things that like maybe I'll share one day maybe I won't I don't know but like just writing and I haven't felt like compelled to post what I've been writing yet even though used to I would have written this and just like posted it that day but I've just been like thinking on my like words more and like really like not just I don't know it's like that's the whole thing of like casual posting like I just feel like posting has become such a stressor in my life. And I'm like, I just don't don't want to do it. And so I'm just like, anyways, I've been writing things I may post, may not. I don't know. Anyway. It's it's kind of the same thing as putting things in your cart and just holding it. there, Thinking about it a little bit longer. I think it's like I've kind of come to realize that like not every single thing that I think I have to share on social media and I think used to I was like oh if I think of something like that's like sounds like profound and like that people would resonate with I should post it you know but it's like some things you should just keep to yourself because that's you know Mm -hmm. because it's personal you know and it's like the more you share the more the less like special your words get sometimes I feel like for me so it's like I really need to just like go back and like start writing again like I used to that don't have to share everything and even like thoughts about like writing a new book I'm like if I write a new book like I can't write a new book if I post every single thing I write (laughs) you know it's like if I post every single thought I have then what's a new book gonna be you know I really need to just like go back and start start you know kind of doing that on my own anyway so I was writing about 2023 and I feel like I've realized that in my life like I'm not a good like look forward and like do a word for this upcoming year like I really am a good reflector and like 
a word for last year is like always like at the end of the year, I always like to like write down like kind of like a bow on the year. Like this is what this year was for me. And like, if I look back and think about that year, I'm going to think that that was this year for me, you know? That's cool. I like that. I really like the idea of going back and reflecting because I think sometimes I can, I just go on to the next year and then I don't look back and then you look back later and you're like wow so much happened and and I think I was actually telling someone this other day it's because like the holidays are so busy and so crazy and then for us we go straight into passion and so we don't have like a holiday break and then we come right back from passion on the weekend and start back work Monday so we don't have I haven't created that space in my schedule to just pause and reflect where I think the holidays for a lot of people are busy, but then you have that one week before you like go back to school or you go back to work. And I haven't had that in my schedule. So I haven't been intentional about scheduling in a time to like pause, say goodbye to this year, say hello to the next year. Cause even new year's, we don't really do anything big for because I'm focusing on the conference and what I'm going to speak about and all those things. And I was just telling Christian next year, I want to be intentional about setting aside time, whether that's after, you know, New Year's or what that looks like after passion, just having a week to just reflect and think. And like you said, kind of put a bow Mm -hmm. on the past year. So I really, I really like that. Which I think too, it's like a lot of times it's just certain people's like nature and just like the way that they like think about their lives. And I feel like if you've read my book or like read anything that I've ever written, it's always like reflective. Like that's just the way that my brain thinks. Like I like to reflect on things and I like to think about how I could do things better. And so anyways, I also was kind of inspired. I was getting my hair done and our hairdresser was like, so do you have a New Year's resolution or like a word for you this year? I was like, no, I do not do that. I was like, I don't do words for the year. But then I started thinking like kind of what this upcoming year I started really reflecting on last year and I feel like 2023 was very like formative for me like I feel like that's the word I would use like I feel like 2023 was like a year that I just like matured and grew in like a million different ways and like very slowly like I feel like it wasn't like there was something that changed me it was just like throughout the year slowly but surely like I just grew up and like was like my whole mind was like formed and matured in a whole new way that I feel like it wasn't one big thing that just like changed my year. First of all, I love what you said. I can see that it was very formative in your life. The second thing is, I think your mind working like that is actually really cool and very cool to point out because my mind does not work like that. I'm so vision focused and forward thinking where I have a really hard time reflecting because that takes like being still and thinking a little bit deeper and more. Whereas I'm like, what's next? What's the future? Where are we going? What's today getting me? How's it getting me to tomorrow? All the things. But it is so special to look back. And I think having two kids now has really um, encouraged me to look back and really focus on the days that I have because I'm realizing how fast it goes. And I'm like, wow, honey's two and a half years old. Like Haven is eight months old. This is crazy. It's happening so fast. I want to treasure those memories. And so I need to look back. And so I love that you said that, but you also mentioned, do you have a word for this year? Did you do this? Yeah. So after my hairdresser like mentioned that to me, I was thinking, I guess like my word for the new year would be like perspectives. Like I feel like I'm trying to have a new perspective on everything that last year, like if last year something looked hard, I'm trying to look at it in this new year as a challenge or like if it looked last year like it was sad this year I'm gonna look at it as hope and like that's good I'm trying to have a new perspective on all the things that last year I may have like thought of yeah negatively and think positively about things I love that let's go you have any resolutions or challenges to yourself I think I want to slowly get back into like posting in a casual Casual posting posting way. I want to post. That's the thing is I do think I want to post, but I just like every time I go to post, I can't do it. I'm just like, I can't. I don't want to. Like I I want to. And then I get there. I'm like, well, I think also just go back to what you were talking about, how you are such a deep thinker and everything is that you're thinking about what is the consequences if I post this, what is the reaction you're getting and all that. But like, you almost just have to like throw it away and just like do post what made you happy. You feel good about it. You don't care about what other people are going to say about it. You know, Mm -hmm. that's casual posting. And it's like, I 
I know I really don't want to like get all back into that world. I don't want to be back how I used to be where that's all I did all day every day. I don't want that. And I just have realized that's just not what I want to do with my life. But I do want to not have like anxiety about it. And I don't want to have like fear surrounding yeah. posting or, yeah. or stress about it. Like I don't want it to be a stressful thing. Yeah. I want it to just be casual. And I really it's do good. enjoy your posts. So like, oh, you know, I love your posts. posts. We want more from B. And not that I don't so know what's I going on in your life it already, too much, but I just, yeah. like, you know, I do enjoy seeing you just like be like artistic mm-hmm. and showing your like talent and stuff on there. I so. love when you casually post. Yeah. Well, you think like, well, why am I stressing so much? I'm overthinking this. No one really cares. And then you get messages of people that you're like, well, dang, people care more than I thought they care, you know? So it's kind of like a catch-22 because it's like you want to believe that no one really cares and that you can post and like, I want to think like, no one's looking at me. No one's thinking about me. And then I get messages. I'm like, people are thinking about me more than yeah. I think about me. Why are you thinking about all this stuff about yeah, my life? Really? Yeah. And, and I was going to say, for those who are listening who are like, why is it so hard to post? Why do you feel so anxious? When you have that much feedback, whether it's praise or criticism, it is very hard to navigate that. The just the feedback and the, the praise and the criticism, either too much of either is not good. And also just having so many voices in your life who – with the best intention y'all you know about us but at the end of the day you have to realize you don't know us you know our full heart our life our days our ins and outs are 24 hours in a day um and we experience that every single day and a post is but a second you know it's a glimpse into a life and so there's so much behind people's life that you you don't understand just like we you know made a quote from a 30 minute talk and you got a snapshot of what the whole talk was like but you can't criticize or even speak too much either way into that quote because you don't understand the context of the whole talk it's the same thing with people's lives and so sometimes you make such a um a sharp comment back to something that you have little understanding for the full picture um and so that can just be hard to navigate Friends, taking care of your health isn't always easy, but it should at least be simple. I'm all about simple. And that's why for the last several years, I've been drinking AG1 each day. Just one scoop mixed in water once a day, every day. And it makes me feel so energized and focused. So great. It's a total game changer. That's because each serving of AG1 delivers my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics and more. It's a powerful, healthy habit that's also so simple. AG1 is the easiest thing that you can do for your health in under a minute. It's so easy. You just drop one scoop in some cold water, shake it up, and it's great. And if I'm running late, I just grab a travel pack with me on the go. I'm a big fan of the travel packs. I am not such a big fan of taking a bunch of pills every day, so it's so great that AG1 offers an all-in-one solution. With AG1, I know I'm covering all my nutritional bases with support for my brain, my gut, and immune system because it's packed with all the different vitamins, probiotics and nutrients that my body needs. Um, So Krisha actually decided to try AG1 first and honestly wasn't really sure about it. I didn't think it was for me. Christian works out a lot. He's really into that kind of stuff. But then whenever I realized that it's actually just for every day and it's not just for people who work out all the time and it's a great way to stay healthy. It's a simple way to add to a routine and just keep my vitamins up. I was like, wow, I should try that. It actually tastes really good. So I was immediately impressed with that and just how great I felt. Christian and I are always talking about how much we love AG1. Y'all have heard us talk about it and that's because it really has made a difference in our health. And now um, a lot of our friends and family are drinking it too, which is so fun. So if there's one product that I had to recommend to elevate your health, that would be AG1. And that is why I've been partners with them for so long. So if you want to take ownership of your health, start with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2. And for a limited time, you'll get 10 free AG1 travel packs. Yes, that's 10 travel packs with your first purchase at drinkag1.com slash woe. That's drinkag1.com slash woe. Check it out while this offer lasts. And it's hard because it's not really all the negative comments. It's, it can be a million different things. It can be the questions. It can be the like hundreds of messages of like, why don't you do this yet? Why, why don't you have kids yet? Why don't you want to, why don't, why do you live there? Why do you not do this? And it's like, when it's one comment, you think it's one, but 
if you're commenting, you're, you're like, oh, this is sweet. I'm commenting like, why, why don't you have kids yet? Can you tell me that? But it's like when you look at my messages and it's hundreds of messages of the same question, it's like that's when it gets to be a lot, you know? Mm-hmm. It's so true. I mean, I've shared with y'all. I was like, I love that honey looks like Christian because she's so sink and cute looking like her daddy. Mm-hmm. But when that was the only comment I got on every picture I posted of honey and it was thousands mm-hmm. upon thousands of comments that she looks nothing like me and just like your dad. It's like, that's true. That's she's so cute. Yes. But why do you only have yeah. to say she looks like her dad? And I'm getting so many of that, that I didn't even want to post pictures anymore. Cause it felt like if that's the only thing people are going to say, then you're missing like the picture that I'm trying to post, you know? And, and if it was one person, it's like, of course that person's not meaning any harm by it. But if you were to look at our DMs and our messages and our question boxes and see how many we get of the same questions that can be, you know, it can be like personal questions or all this different stuff, you know, it's just, I don't know, it yeah. can be a lot. I was going to yeah. say a lot of the time, thankfully, I don't get a whole lot of criticism, but it's like, oh, I love how you posted this. I want to see more of this. And it's like, okay, well, what if I don't want to post that every day, you know? So it's like a lot of that. It's not really just criticism. It's It's hard to, if you're a person who doesn't want to share all the things, because I have friends who like get hundreds of questions with the same as mine, but they're fine to answer that. And they want to answer that. And they want to share that. But I'm like, I don't, I don't want to share everything. Like, I don't want to post all, I don't want to answer all these questions. But some people like Rebecca normally will tell anything. Like if someone asks her, she doesn't mind answering and she posts every day and that's comfortable for her and she likes that. But I just don't. Oh, I ignore tons of, yeah. yeah. It's also like where you're at and it's not, it's not so much the people commenting. That's the problem. Like you said, there's no harm in asking the question. It's that when there's something that's going on in your life privately, that people don't know any better to not speak into or to Mm -hmm. ask the question or to say something, or there's an insecurity that people keep poking at. They don't mean to poke at it, but they are poking at it. Then you Mm -hmm. have to put up your own boundaries with social media and say, okay, I'm not in the place to, to get these questions. I'm not in the place to get this feedback. I'm not in the place to get the praise, the criticism, the questions, any of it. I really need to just like have a moment of time where I'm just getting the feedback of people who know me, love Mm -hmm. me. People who are asking me the questions that they're asking me actually know the context of Mm -hmm. where I'm at in my life. And so it's really not as much like a social media problem as much as it's just a personal like boundary that you have to create and take the time that it requires to get well before you allow yourself to be in front of so many eyes. Yeah. And it's not a bad thing. Like, I'm not saying this is like, I mean, all the people who follow me, I appreciate everybody who comments nice things and all that kind of stuff. It's not that. It's just in myself, I've been just like battling all of it. And it's good that you recognize that. You know, I feel like, you know, I, I think my personality, it's like, I do like, I can look past things like I don't get mad about like things like I'm easily like they said this I just deleted or you know like and because like John Reed gets so offensive like so bad so and like I'm just like you don't need to like respond to this negative comment because who cares like yeah. there's the people we don't know and if they're spending time doing that kind of stuff like they have nothing else better to do you know mm-hmm. so it's like don't care about them just Mm -hmm. you know I'm only posting for people that I know it's like have positive impact and you know I'm actually you know sharing things and helping people I feel like they are you know on the same page yeah you know. and just for those listening to that is one of the most encouraging things ever when you get comments that are like you know i love what you said here this was really helpful or, oh having the sisters on is so fun like yeah. those just like positive feedback encouragement yeah. means so much because sometimes it is weird to sit in this room and do a podcast and then i see the number of people listening but i don't know what you think. Like, I don't, I'm like, I want to see your comments. We want to see the messages. Um, actually a lot of what we were going to talk about today that I have here are from DMS that y'all have sent. And so there is such a beauty to that too. There's a beautiful side to that. I think ultimately, yes, our personal boundaries have to, we have to be responsible for where we're at. And Mm -hmm. if we're, if we're not able to casually post or not stay away from doom scrolling, then we have to take the time we need to get off social media. That's why I was off social media for eight months 
months of last year because I was kind of where Bella was at, where I was like, I just can't do it right now. You know, I don't need it right now. I, I, I have to just get healthy in my own, um, my own space. But uh, I love that. That's a great point. You know, if, you, if you're in that space, stay on and thrive in it, you know, and then if you're not, get healthy, then come back. All right, Mary Kay, tell us about your year. Any any um, word, goals, aspirations, challenges, all the things. Well, when Abby was reading her list, I was very impressed by it because I was like, man, I wish I would have thought like a little bit more <laughs> um, about, you know, just writing everything down this year. But I really feel like I was just sitting here thinking about it. And I mean, I have like the typical of like read more and exercise more. Um, but as I was sitting here, like just kind of, dawned on me like I feel like this year thinking about the upcoming year and I've thought I have thought about it I just don't have like my whole like list yeah yeah but it just hit me that like I really feel like this is the first year that every thing that I can think of really is just for like my kids oh that's cool because like it's not like I'm just setting I think just realizing like John Shepard is four like Ella's two and a half like he's getting to the age two where like he's gonna remember things you know what I mean like yeah and just I feel like looking at this year, it was kind of like, okay, what am I wanting for them? Yeah. Like what good things do I want to set up for them and their lives this year? And um, so I feel like some of that was just like ha- good habit building, like in our family. That's cool. Um, and like last year, like I was doing my Bible recap and then we moved um, and really a lot of, of all sorts of events. And like I had some at the end of my pregnancy was just having some issues and all these things kind of led me to getting off of that. And this year I was like, okay, I want my kids, like I want to be in the word every day, but I also want to make sure my kids are seeing me. That's cool. And it, and, and just in that kind of sense of like, where I know this is going to benefit me, but I also know like, I want to do this to benefit them Yeah, that's too. cool. And so even that, and like, we're doing like just good habits of like, we go from that to then like breakfast and like over breakfast is when we do our devotion, like with the kids. That's cool. And so it's just interesting I feel like now realizing my life and my my habits don't just affect me anymore. Yeah, yeah. They affect our whole family. Yeah. And I think especially as women, like whether you have kids or you don't have kids, like you, like when you're married, you're the heart of your home. Yeah. And realizing like really the whole tone and mood of my home comes like from me. Yeah. You know? And like, yeah. I'm like, I'm who my husband's coming home to every yeah, day, you know, right. and like he can come home to someone yeah. who's, and also realizing like how I set my day affects the person I am, yeah, which affects, which is the mom that my kids have yeah, and the wife that my husband has. Yeah. You know what I mean? So true. So I feel like this year it's just been like, okay, what good habits can we set? to benefit like our whole family. That's so good. good. Yeah. I love that. That's so true. And just the responsibility as a mom and thinking about, I love how you said not even just a mom, but your spouse or even in your friendships, like who you are affects so many people around you. And that's like the gift of being a healthy person. You give it to everyone around you. They get to experience a healthy friend, a healthy mom, a healthy wife, and all of those different things. Y'all, I don't know if I should say this. Maybe I should knock on wood. This is too soon. But I have not had the flu this season or COVID or any of the big dogs, which is shocking for me because I am typically the person that gets them. But I have been staying on it. I have been, you know, trying to stay healthy, doing all the things. I've been drinking my Element every day. I got my packs right here. Staying hydrated, staying healthy. Whether you're exercising or recovering from illness or whatever it is or trying to avoid it, Element has got you covered with everything your body needs and nothing it doesn't. It's a tasty drink mix that delivers a meaningful dose of electrolytes in every pack. And if you follow me, then you know that I love quality stuff like this and safety in the products that I choose. So I'm pumped that Element doesn't include any sugars, artificial coloring, or any shady ingredients uh, since it's formulated to help anyone and everyone with their electrolyte needs. It's even suited for people who follow keto, low carb, and paleo diets. Electrolytes are responsible for hundreds of super important functions in the body. And when we sweat, we lose electrolytes, which is why we need to replenish them. If we don't replenish them, then we suffer from things like muscle cramps, fatigue, headaches, and more. Thankfully, Element can help prevent all of those things and I personally have experienced that. I have bad muscle cramps, so whenever I drink Element, I do not have them, and it is amazing. Um, Headaches, too. I mean, 
it just keeps you so hydrated. I'm not very good at just drinking water on its own, but whenever I have my Element, I love it. Also, you could do it hot or cold. So I prefer cold Element. I like raspberry and watermelon flavors, but they also have hot ones like chocolate mint, chocolate chai, chocolate raspberry. It's a whole chocolate um, arrangement, and it's it's really good. You can drink it hot if you want to, and you know enjoy it for the winter. Element is used by tons of people, like uh, professional and Olympic athletes, U.S. Special Forces team exercise enthusiasts and everyday people like me and my sister who just love our element so right now element is offering a free sample pack with any purchase that's eight single serving packets free with a, any element order this is a great way to try all eight flavors and share element with salty friend and i will say this is such a good thing because my sister loves element too but she only tried one so she's like sadie what's your deal and i said oh it's eight free you know sample packs and she was like oh okay well that's good because then i can try it and she actually our favorites were different. She ended up liking the orange and the citrus, and I prefer the watermelon raspberry. So it's good to try all of them and see what you like. You can get yours at drinkelement.com slash woe. This deal is only available through my link, so you got to go to drinkelement, D-R-I-N-K, lmnt.com slash woe. Element offers no question asked refund, so try it totally risk-free. If you don't like it, share it with a salty friend and they'll give you your money back. No questions asked. You really have nothing to lose. It's so funny you said that because I was thinking that the other day because a lot of times because what I do, I'm preaching and different things like I'm studying the Bible here at the office and not really at home as much. Or if I do, it'll be before the kids wake up. But the other night I was reading um, at night while Honey and Christian were just kind of running around and Honey came over and she's like, what you doing? And then she's like, is that your Bible? Because she has a little uh, princess book that she calls her Bible. And she like carries, she's like, where's my Bible? Where's my Bible? And um, she was like asking me what I was doing. And I said, do you want to preach? And she was like, yeah, I want to preach. And so Aww. she stood beside me and I would like point out verses. And I was like, can you say John? She's like, John, like 316, 316. And she was preaching it to Christian. Aww. And it was so cute. And I was like, I need to do this with her more. You know, like yes. the, you're so right. Like the things we're doing for ourselves, like doing for our kids, with our kids and like training them up in that. Um, because we always think this, like, like, oh, I wish I learned scripture more when you were younger. Mm-hmm. You know, you wish yeah. you like paid attention more in school. You wish you did all that. But to make it something in the home that's fun, that they see you just like you value and you use in your life that you really believe and you really want to speak over them. It's so cool to see them in return, like act that out. You know, it's awesome. That's such a good point. I love that. Becca, what do you, what do you think about this year? Well, it's so funny because I, you know, I just started thinking about the words because I don't usually do like the new word of the year either. And so I was thinking and I came up with this word and it's kind of like a little opposite than what Mary Kay just said, but it's not like, I'll just say the word and you understand why I say it's opposite. But my word is priority. But to me, it's like kind of like putting myself and my relationship with my husband as priority this year, just it's because like, yeah. I feel like in the past, I've always put like our kids like so in the front of like, you know, especially y'all know Holland, she just turned two. She was like so hard. And so I have basically been like, just putting like everything on our kids, like everything, like I had a clothing line, but then I couldn't do it because she was just so hard and just like feeding her till she was two. And just like, everything is always surrounded by their schedule, everything. So I really felt like this year I wanted to like, for myself and just That's like good, right taking yeah. care of myself and like do things I want to do and just kind of like getting back to like some of my old like you know things I want to do and just kind of like get back to designing and like you know spending a little bit more time maybe like wash my hair a little bit more often <laughs> <laughs> and taking shower or bath you're like, the opposite of that because how yeah. many days do you go without like washing your hair seven like That's crazy. a week and That's crazy. I know it's a little dirty crazy. right now um but <laughs> But, like, just even, like, being able to take a bath, like, by myself. Like, I literally, like, every time I go in the bathroom, my kids follow me. Yeah. And, like, you know. Yeah. But it just, because that's just the way they are. But, like. It's, like, funny because if someone's watching this, they would be like, oh. But we're all, like, 
Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah. Yes. And I'm not like you know I'm not the type of person like okay put myself first. No, like, it's not yeah, like the yes. the worldly like I'm gonna put myself yes. first. Like you really do do everything yes. for your and kids. And I feel like I really haven't done kids. anything. And you like, haven't left Holland. No, Holland. I've never left her overnight till literally recently. Like I bring her off like. You know, so I love her one night and it was amazing. And I just felt like just like putting that also like to like spend time with my husband instead of like my the father of my our children, you know, because it's just like it was so good. Just like we went out and we found this like super cool, like little like speakeasy place and they have a. Uh, Explosion kittens. Exploding kittens. Exploding kittens. Yes. The we card game. Kittens. And we were playing that. And uh-huh. it was like, I week. we have not played game like together. Like it was just like mm-hmm. so fun just uh-huh. getting back to that moment. Like, you know, and so not saying like complete opposite, yeah. but I'm just saying like But what's so cool as sisters, I look at Mary Kate yeah, and I'm like, know yes. how, like we're like that is amazing what I see for yeah. her family, like the way that she's stepping into that. And I remember a couple years ago when you and Jolie started prioritizing date night each week and like yes. you've been in that place and now you're in that place. Yes. And it's like it's so cool to see because yeah. things like just like Bella for social media, that was me last year. Now this year yes. I'm like on it. Just and um, so it's so and cool. We all have different things that we need to work on and like and yeah. they may oppose each other and like Abby's like I need to stop washing my hair every day and Rebecca's like I need to start we'll washing my hair, hair more yeah, like, like we have different so like, the we big all and small. need to do and different that's things so different fun about like us sisters because we're all so different but you know and we learn from each other you know and we see like things like we love and like mistake from each other that we can learn from and then you can we can all like support each other and that's yeah. like really cool that has been really cool listening to all of y'all reflecting on where we've all been the past few years that no one knows and no one needs to know but seeing like what everyone said I'm like that's so cool because it's not what it was last year and it's yeah. different because everyone's grown since we so, since where we were at last year and yeah. and now we're stepping into a new thing that we're learning and growing we in. just do this like every year we and, do like, we'll look back <laughs> on like, cool. like there's something I can't remember maybe Variety or someone does like with certain celebrities they do every single year they interview them and ask the same questions and like see what they're on. that's yeah. cool I want to see if Abby makes it past day two. Oh, I want I want to recap to see we if her hair's changed <laughs> I was just thinking too like Abby was like I need to stop buying makeup, and I don't know me and Sadie are like, we probably need to stop buying makeup too. And Rebecca's like, I need, I need to start to, I should buy makeup. Buy makeup, yeah. Well, it's so funny because um, we were talking a little bit about our resolutions on a different podcast with Christian, and it was so funny because I was saying all of mine, and mine were more like spiritual and um, just more challenging, and Christian was more physical, and I didn't have one workout or physical thing in mind. And he's like, I'm going to give you one. You need to learn how to run a mile this year. And I was like, you're not supposed to give me one, but thank you. But sometimes you do need somebody to be like, hey, actually, you should probably stop buying makeup, you know? And yes, I I should do that too. I'm like... I'm just going to go ahead and speak for me and say, do you yeah, probably thank need you to for not that. buy this much makeup? <laughs> <laughs> no, and I, I'm with Abby, though. I need to learn how to trim my hair, too, because I, I've gotten to every other day, but I was at every day because my hair gets greasy fast, and that's hard. But my word for the year, um, I want to read the definition because this the definition of it is why it's impactful to me but it's stretch and it's because I was looking and it was not physical and that's what Christian said oh I'm gonna use that word too but I'm gonna actually stretch every day and that was actually one of mom she's stretching every day I was like mine's not like I'm physically stretching but I probably should do that too my stretch was um because when I was looking at the year like sometimes I can get really overwhelmed when I look at a calendar and it's really full or busy and I'm like oh like how am I gonna do that um and I was kind of starting to get a little stressed about it and I thought this year's gonna be a stretch so then I looked up the definition of the word stretch and I thought this was really cool and it says to call someone to make maximum v- maximum use of their talents or abilities. And I thought that was a really cool definition to cause someone to make a maximum use of their talents and abilities. When you think about it, like if I'm about to run a race, then I would stretch and it's like getting out all the soreness, you're, but you're doing it to, to be able to use your maximum strength. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to refocus and not be like, wow, this is so busy, but I'm going to have an opportunity to stretch myself and use different talents or use different gifts that I haven't in a while. Like, um, 
I said yes to just certain events that are things I don't typically say yes to that were just a little bit more different. And I'm like, this is going to be so good. It's going to be a stretch, but it's going to be fun. And so that's my word for the year. Uh, stretch through all the the anxiousness and all the things and just um, show up. And my, some of my resolutions were don't buy things that I don't need, but that was just the month of January, but I think I do need to put an extension on it. Um, and then also you and Christian get more packages than anybody I've ever seen. Yeah. But that's also but not Christian, just us buying. It's honestly Christian though. That's not just us it's buying. It's Christian. Cause it they, Christian. he has mom's address. Mm-hmm. Every time I go over there, there's a stack of Christian Pop, pop. What does he buy? Like, what does he like to like buy? Like, one time it was like a random lion phone stuff. case or something. Oh, yeah. Like, he oh, does kind of like, have some buy? random purchases. He buys random things. But also, like we're very, that. like, subscription people. Like, we yeah. do, like, groceries, yeah, meals. Yeah, you'll yeah, do yeah. All We are very, even my mascara is a sus- subscription. Yeah. So, like, we don't shop out pretty much ever. Like, it's always delivered. Line, yeah. So, yeah. it does seem like a lot because our paper towels, our paper plates, our cups, our everything, everything is delivered. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. I may get, like, like one package a month. Even our water, like everything. Egg. Really? Yeah, I never order anything. Wow. I get a lot too, but yeah, I like maybe like one or two. Jacob week. gets like three packages a day with vintage clothes, that's, and I'm like, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's that's ridiculous because yeah. every day I get home and I'm like packages, and then they're not. Oh, and I love I love to like burn burn boxes in our fireplace, and like so every time I get the boxes, you out, should join Christian and Jolie's burn party. <laughs> oh my gosh, they oh, burn once a week. Oh, it's so bad. I probably should have done do it with them outside because I do it inside and like I almost start a few fire a few times. You should go do it with them. Like, they, I know. I they need have to. So much yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah. So okay, yes, topic. we have a burn pile like on the side. Yeah, you should go burn with them. Yeah. They have a good time. But yeah, so. The boxes are really our subscriptions, which is everything that we have. Um, and then also, um, I want to read 10 books again, even though I didn't make it to 10 last year. That was a good goal because it got me to eight. So I'm back on that train. Um, and I'm trying to read books that I wouldn't normally read, like a fantasy book, which is challenging oh. me so much because I am like, having You're the hardest time. Good. Mary Kate and are just pitching this, that it's so good because Mary Kate loves these fantasy books, her and Jolly both. So I was like, I want to get into that, but it is a struggle for me so we'll see if I make it to the end of the um the wing feather saga so we'll see we'll see but yeah I um I'm excited for this year I feel like we have a lot of things to come um you know there's some things that our families walk into that are new this year and that was another part of my stretching um just things that we haven't done in a long time that we're starting back up so we have a lot of fun things to come we'll hopefully do a recap of this podcast and it's funny because um I when we before we started filming I was like do y'all want to talk about resolutions or do y'all want to answer dms and we were like let's do both it won't take us long to talk about resolutions and we're 41 minutes in so we did spend the whole podcast talking about that but it led us into so many great conversations and that just means I'll have to have y'all back on to answer some dms um but thank y'all so much for for listening and also all the encouragement on social media that you send as always it means so much to just get um something positive and encouraging like we said we do get a lot of questions we do get criticism sometimes too much praise and no comments about like no comments Anybody about who likes. comments about the amount of times they like I'm gonna comment back <laughs> Bella's gonna come at you um, but the encouragement always goes a long way it really does and um, we want to hear about y'all's words of the year some resolutions y'all have I'm gonna make Abby post her ins and outs that's gonna be her first casual post of the year I mean of February so anyways love you guys and look forward to the next talk <laughs>